Hello everyone, welcome back to episode 11 of We the Revolution. So if you saw the last episode, you know who is on trial here. Also, what I was thinking about, it's still not really established that Posh really had something to do with the murder. I mean, how could he have ordered it? It must have been someone else. It must have been someone of Posh's people, but not he himself. But still, if you look at it from that case, she did murder someone. I don't want to do this now. Okay, um, so the extenuating circumstances are probably that she did not resist. The motive was probably blackmail. The offender's personality is... Maybe the concealing her identity is her personality. Maybe it's also that she didn't resist arrest. Yes. So the crime scene was probably the abandoned house. The accusation is cold-blooded murder. So what's concealing? Oh no, it can't be. How is this an accusation and how is this a motive? Maybe this is just a trap. So the knife in her hand is, is an accusation? Or is it a motive? No, it's not an accusation because she's not accused of holding a knife. So this could be the motive. Yes. The intimate relationship could be belong to the motive as well or her personality. No, it's... No, okay. Then it is the offender's personality. Okay. So the judge's assistance, but it was, oh, okay, but it was with our assistance, so, no. <sighs> Concealing her identity is probably not an accusation, because why should this be an accusation? Is this a motive? Yes. The knife in her hand, is that part of her personality or an accusation? Yes. Very good. I don't want her I don't want to kill her because then it would look like I would do it for my family. But she did kill someone. This game is tearing me apart. Although many of you know this face already, I call upon the defendant to introduce herself. Marie Sylvie Posh, daughter. Yes, we know. <laughs> okay, I think it would be a very hard feat to to call her innocent. Oh, he offered no resistance during the arrest. Why are you so calm? Maybe because I was there and I told her that everything would be alright. You offered no resistance during the arrest. Why were you so calm? I know what I have done and I do not deny a thing. Oh god. And you are aware that punishment will be fatal for a crime such as this. Perhaps you should have tried to save yourself? Our family reputation has been tarnished by these accusations against my father, the person whom Beatrice turned out to be a blackmailer. What would I save? My life? What life? You mean you murdered this woman in cold blood because she hurt your family? She's not even denying it. What a fool. Do you know how I learned of your meeting? I had begun to wonder about that in the prison cell. Beatrice Caron testified she was an Austrian spy and that she kept in touch with you only to spy on your father. That is absurd. It is not easy to accept the truth. You seek to turn our affections into a mere political game. Love is on a somewhat different level. Well, did she love you that much though? Because she turned pretty fast to blackmailing you. Disgusting. They loved each other so much that one ended up killing the other. It is you who are disgusting, you and your parochial world. The revolution has failed at opening your minds, hearts and souls. Please describe your feelings when you got the letter from Beatrice. My heart broke. So we have confirmation of the motive. You truly are ingenious investigators. Finally, you have grasped what I have been telling you from the beginning. Beatrice was very dear to me, like... Don't let her say it aloud! Please, spare us the details. Ugh, don't be so stuck up. Well, of course, because your holy hearts would not stand the idea of two women being together. Where is that freedom, you equality of yours? I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense asking her that. 
How long had you been in an intimate relationship with the victim? For one year. It started... Do we have to listen to these perverted effusions? The prisoner has the right to defend herself. If her testimony is too much for you, Prosecutor Tinville, I can finish this trial by myself. Yeah, thank you. I will stay. I ask the defendant to continue. It started... No, I do not want to expose my feelings to those who believe them to be something against nature. You have likened me to an animal already. Your testimony could help and... Yes, I killed Beatrice because I'm a degenerate monster, a freak. Is that what you wanted to hear? That's right, monster. No, I don't want her... Ah! Why did you choose this particular place to murder your victim? It was not me who chose the place, but Beatrice, and I had no intention of murdering anyone. There would be no witnesses to the crime there. A crime was committed every time we met there, a crime of misalliance... Miss... Al Miss Alliance? A crime of misalliance, a crime of sex and bodies, we relied on having no witnesses. So they did in fact... well... Oh, I hate... How, did, how in what direction this is going? This is just going into the direction of, yeah, I'm a lesbian, you think of me as a monster already, so yeah, I killed her, that's what you believe of me anyway, right? You murdered a good friend. The knife went into her as it would any stranger. You speak without any trace of emotion. How is that possible? When I received Beatrice's letter, my heart turned to ice and I saw the true colors of the world. Treachery, egotism, ruthlessness. She's young, rich, and foolish. <laughs> no. During arrest, you handed the murder weapon to me. I gave it to the right person. Please explain. I handed the knife to the head butcher of the city. A man who knows that the instrument was meant for him. He will smell blood long after my death. Those atrocities with another woman have mixed up her head. You will remember my words, Judge Fidel. This knife will get you one day. The defendant is trying to intimidate the judge. Where did you get the knife? We needed to cut bread sometimes when we were hungry. I had taken it there before and it was just lying around. Did you plan this crime in advance? No. I said... Will anyone listen to me? I said I had taken the kitchen knife from my house to be able to... I bet it was all silver. I heard the mayor was a rich man. Well, what difference does it make what I say if your minds are close to my words? Austrian bitch. Tribait. Fricatries. Do not dare to offend the people. What if the owner of the house that you occupied for your twists had returned? We did not occupy the house. That conclusion is ridiculous. The mayor's daughter wanted to demonstrate she had power. How aristocratic. I am not an aristocrat, I come from the common people. The poorer citizens of Paris accepted me as their own because they could see that I care about them. They accepted you because they did not know you were the daughter of an important figure. Perhaps, Prosecutor Tinville, there is indeed the possibility that my life and dreams were truly that pathetic. She occupied the house because she wanted to show off to others how important she was. You are just babbling. Okay, let's ask her the last question too, because it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> oh, I forgot to read it. I'm sorry. I do not know. We talked a little about money. We talked about pain, mainly my own. You supposedly knew the victim very well. We did not talk about money. We were not planning a future together. Everyone knows that would not be possible. And for the better. Away with this abomination. As you can see. That money would likely have been used to further develop the Austrian spy ring in France. What makes you think so? You are not here to ask questions. I have to sentence her to death, but I am afraid that the game is making this like about a lot of other reasons for why I personally would choose it. Because the game is like implying that yeah, she killed it, she's, she's an abomination, she's wrong in the head and everything just because she's a lesbian. And then, after that, when I sentence her to death in the evening, my family will say that I did it because they threatened me to do it. But in fact, I did it, or I'm going to do it now, because she murdered someone. That's the reason. She killed someone, and she admits to it. Because I can't lock her up, I have to kill her. 
and I'm sorry. Because I can't shake the feeling that this is all because of our schemes and she knows it too. I'm sorry. I'm kind of sorry. So, what about the small things? Emilien Bazalguet, a war invalid and beggar, was caught trying to persuade a little girl to go to a cellar with him. He then tried to escape the guard and accidentally scared a horse yoked to a, a, horse yoked to a cart. The beast ran down the street, heavily damaging the vehicle. Um, death. Because he tried to lure a little girl into a cellar. Mathieu Cousteau, a carpenter, visited the lawyer Basile Lazar in order to take measurements for a three-door wardrobe. He took the opportunity to examine the contents of the dresser, whereupon his hands accidentally got stuck to a bottle of cognac. Seriously, he's not going to die for this. I think I lost a lot with the, arist with the aristocrats today, but... This game is so hard on me. <laughs> I hate it, but I also can't stop playing it. I hate what I have become. Did the defendant confess to the crime? Yes. The muscadines did not did not recognize the defendant. Why? She concealed her true surname. Did the defendant confirm being sexual sexually involved with the victim? Yes. Where did the accused get the murder weapon? She brought it from her house. I feel so bad. For murder, I sentence Marie Sylvie Pache to death. Yeah, thank you. That's the right thing. It was clear from the beginning. I don't even feel sorry for her. Had she got herself a man, this would have ended differently. No, shut up. If she murdered her husband, she would also be he she would also be losing her head. Ah. So now I have to cut off her head. I think I don't want to hold... I don't know if I want to hold a speech or not. Because I, I'm afraid that it will go into the direction that what she did was wrong. Not the murdering per se, but also the being with a woman is wrong. And I don't want... No, I don't want to do this today. Why are you staring at me? Do you see a victory here? I still feel for her. She is guilty. She did something bad, but I still feel bad for her because I think this is as part of my responsibility. Are you happy now, wife? When did you meet my brother, Bruno? We served in the same brigade, and I owe him my life. He put himself in danger, dragging me away from the battlefield when I was injured, but was not so lucky himself. We have dedicated far too much time to that man already, both in our thoughts and our stories. Shut up, wife. Seriously? You're just here to spit venom around. I want to know. As do I. A stray bullet killed him. I never even got the chance to thank him for saving my life. I can assure you that we were friends. What? What's happening here? Battles are dynamic fights between two hostile armies. They include infantry, rifles and artillery. Enemy generals may have different preferences regarding their tactics. Each tactic defines the way the attack or defense is conducted and affects the minor bonuses that your troops will receive in battle. The balance of power during battles may change. Watch the respective bars and use the information you gain to choose the right tactics. Our rearguard clashed with the enemy and lost. They forced their way into the camp where the wounded were being tended to. We had to grab our weapons. What can I do? Okay, well then let's go.
Your brother fought like a man possessed. People were flocking to him. I have a lot of shooters, so maybe this is effective. Huh. Oh great. I think I'm gonna die, but I think it's meant to be like this because we are recreating our brother's death. We had faith that reinforcements were rushing to help us, but we knew they would be too late. Let's defend ourselves. That was a good tactic, I think. Oh no. I think defend a bayonet went right through me. I was bleeding out and my friends were being felled by bullets one after another. I think I'm gonna go with defense again. Why not? We're gonna lose anyway, so it doesn't really matter. gonna do it again maybe we can at least kill the shooters yes okay now the here is too your brother pulled me from among the dead and dragged me far from the battlefield the moment we reached the trees a straight bullet caught him in the back he died almost immediately, and I deserted. I thought that I should thank you, his blood, and try to pay debt with my actions. So Bruno has paid for his sins. My son. He often said, Alexi, my brother, he is the only thing that matters. You must have been important to him. Aww. Let's just do that. I'm still scared that my wife will stab me in the back at some point. She's a little bit unstable, I think. There's nothing that I can do, I think. There is nothing I can do. Although, wait. I can do that. And then I should build some more on my statue. Oh, we're in Act 2. What about rumors? What? There have been problems with food supplies. It's as though someone wants to starve the capital. What? Rumors are going around that you are a drunkard and a gambler. Nothing new, however, people are starting to think less of you. Your position is high and hierarchy is getting stronger. Oh well. So what about the hierarchy? Hash is gone. Well. Hmm. So what does this note say? Oh no. What happened? Rather disturbing news has reached me. The residents of a local graveyard have begun to leave. Yes, I mean the dead. In the last two weeks, three bodies of different sexes and ages have disappeared. All they have in common is that they were recently buried. Nobody has seen anything. Everyone claims they have simply vanished. The captain of the guard has refused to assign anyone to keep an eye on the graveyard. As it is, we can only expect that more bodies will disappear soon and all of us will be in trouble. I don't want to ignore this. I want to investigate it. So, who are you? 
He is for, um, he's on trial for murder and treason. Alfred Renoir is a 43-year-old baker from the northern Parisian suburbs. Renoir has been accused of causing the death of several children from the neighborhood. The defendant and his wife have two sons and a daughter. Witnesses claim that he is a man of few words but sympathetic. He would not refuse to sell bread on credit. Neither did he ever add sawdust to flour. During the investigation, his house was searched and no monarchist materials were found. The lawsuits against the baker were, filled by, were filed by three women that blame him for the death of their children. In total, eight, eight minors were found dead. The cause of death was confirmed by a Parisian doctor as hunger. A week earlier, those women, together with a small group of neighbors, tried to force the baker to sell them bread, or at least some flour. According to witnesses, there were no more than 15 people standing in front of the bakery. Renoir categorically refused and threatened to call the guard. When the hungry people asked him to increase the production of bread, he refused again. On the next day, the three mothers who are now accusing him once again paid him a visit and once more were not able to buy any bread. The investigator, assisted by soldiers, found a large supply of flour in the bakery's stores. It is hard to prove whether the death of the children was caused solely by the baker's behavior. The baker testified that he was buying his flour from a peasant in the countryside. However, nobody has ever seen him in Paris. People are gossiping that he is conspiring with the Austrians. Many believe that the Habsburgs are trying to fight the revolution by starving the citizens of Paris. The accused couldn't explain his reasoning for not selling bread and would only say that he didn't have a choice. Evidence of purchase ledger. So where is this evidence? It's not here. Who's she? Okay. So I guess the purchase ledger is evidence, as it's stated. The accusation is refusing to help. The death of children is also the accusation. I guess the witnesses state that he is refusing to help. And probably that's also counter-revolutionary. Hunger in Paris is only counter-revolution. So the mysterious supplier is a trap. No, he was a trap. So the mysterious supplier is counter-revolutionary. So I wonder why he wasn't allowed to sell. Murdering traitor, we want our bread. When hungry and desperate people start discussing possible conspiracy, it is better to stay away from their suspicions. Yeah, I wonder. I mean, why couldn't they just... I don't know. He, I'm sure he wasn't the only baker, right? The defendant may introduce himself. My name is Alfred Renoir. I'm a baker. Citizen Renoir, you are accused of causing the death of several children. I didn't kill anybody. I would never hurt a child. He may not have used a knife, but he is still guilty. Heartless bastard. Who is Georgine Maillard and why is she allowed to stand there? Um, so, let's call in the witness. Please call in the witness. Who are you? Please introduce yourself. Arnaud Lemou, I examined the children. Really? Could you describe your conclusions after examining the children? They were weakened and gaunt, clearly malnourished. They must have been in that state for some time. Would a few loaves of bread from the baker have helped to avert a tragedy? You cannot give a starving person bread on an empty stomach. That usually has a disastrous effect and no, a little bread would simply postpone their death for a few days. How dare you! Perhaps in those few days the parents would have been able to find more food. Perhaps. What do you think about the Austrian plan to starve all of Paris? That is just ridiculous. One baker? People talk of dozens. In my experience, people often talk nonsense. A large group of uneducated people will always look for a simple answer. But let us assume for a moment that those rumors are indeed true. Would such a conspiracy of bakers lead to the deaths of a large number of people? I guess it would, yes. Many Parisians eat mostly bread, so the number of deaths would increase. Have you recently noticed an increase in the number of people starving to death? Yes, but I really don't think that it's the result of a plot. There are other reasons too. Food supply troubles and the war and the chaos caused by them both too. Good thing we figured it out. Treason! 
Yeah, I think so too. I mean, seriously, how is... According to the purchase ledger, you had enough bread to sell to those women and many other clients beside. I have now, but who knows what will happen soon. Will there be another supply? The true hunger has yet to hit us and I have a family to support. How long will they be forced to survive on my current supplies alone? We had children too! You were sorting it all for your own use? For my family, yes. Is that really a crime? And you were eating every day? Luckily, yes, but I'm not sure how long it will last. Bastard, did you hear him? Imperial sellout! I don't know, it just seems like he was more worried about himself than others. Are you an Austrian spy? Citizen. I didn't reply as I would rather not insult you, Monsieur Le Judge, because the only suitable answer is that whoever made this rubbish up must be an idiot, and I apologize, Monsieur Le Judge, if it was your idea. Many people are saying that something was amiss. I can't even speak their language. Some simpletons have made up this ridiculous accusation because they can't properly manage their own lives. Who are you calling simpletons, you selfish bastard? I don't really want to kill him. Why did the defendant not share his supplies? We already know that. Yeah. Hmm. I'm afraid that if I ask him how a flower was delivered, that it could be a bad thing too, because you never know. Although it's, it's weighted, so maybe... Oh, okay. How is your flower delivered? I collect it myself every Saturday. So you regularly travel out of town. Does anybody else go with you? No. Why? Because of the suspicions about you being a spy and conspirator. Bravo! The judge has, the, the, the judge has exposed the traitor. Why would it be strange that a baker travels to the countryside once a week to collect flour? Why would it be strange that someone who regularly travels is recruited as a spy? That's absurd. Call in the witness. Oh no. Who are you? You were the one who traded with the defendant. Please introduce yourself. Rutman is my name. I am a peasant and a miller. Yes, I traded with him, Monsieur Le Judge. Why not? Did I do something wrong? How long have you been trading? Six or seven years now. Did you notice a change in the defendant's behavior recently? No, he was kind, like always, though he tried to convince me to trade only with him. What did you say? Was that not a suspicious request? I agreed. Why would I care? He always paid well and was buying enough. I mean, sure, it was odd that he had that much money with him, but that's none of my business, right? Oh no. Did any of your other clients regularly buy such quantities of flour? It was unusual, yes. I don't know why he needed so much flour, but these are difficult times and he always paid in advance. Other people often ask for a, defer for a deferred payment, but he never has. Renoir never asked for a deferred payment? No. The Austrians must have paid the baker well for his information so he could buy all that flour. Rutman is a strange name for a Frenchman. My father came from Hanover. Is the citizen aware that we are also at war with Hanover? So what? My father is dead and he can't fight with anyone. I was born here. I'm confused. Because it seems like he's rather wealthy and he stores a lot of flour, but it just seems like he is... He's worried about his family. So apparently he had the flour for it, but... He just kept it all for himself because he wanted to save his family first. Is that a crime? No, it's not. It's definitely not his fault that their kids, that their children died. He's not the sole person to blame, in my opinion. So I think it's the right thing to let him go free. I would lose a lot with the free folk, but if I don't, I would lose a lot with the aristocrats too, so... Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I don't know, the questions are... Is it true that you refuse to sell bread to those three women? I guess the answer is yes. Do you know that, your country, that our country is at war? Your refusal was the direct cause. Hmm. Don't know, I... Still don't think that this is his fault alone. I mean, the, the prosecutor said that it that um, a lot of bakers did this, but still, I mean, he's not at fault for this. He's not the only baker in town, I guess. 
I guess it must be hard. And, I don't know, I think it's unimaginable for us to imagine that we don't have food at some point. That there is nothing to eat left. But I still don't think that he's guilty. Really? It was shared. Um, so did the defendant, did the defendant, no. Was this act counter-revolutionary? No. What was found during the investigation of the defendant's house? It was a large supply of bread, wasn't it? Or was it just flour? Oh, is it, is this, there anything here according to the purchase letter? Enough bread to sell to those women. Okay, so I guess it was the bread. I hope this is correct now. The defendant has not committed any crime. Pre please release citizen Alfre Renoir. Objection, I demand the defendant to be punished. What's it to you, Tinville? Your children don't know hunger, do they, judge? The judge surely conspires with the Austrians. We want a different judge. That's not for you. What? No. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. The crime for which he was accused was murder, and he did not confess to this. I really suck at those protocols now, although I should have known it. <sighs> well, you're free to go. Be happy about it. Goodbye. Really? Really? My father now likes to go to the theater? What happened with him? I think I need to build a statue though. Sorry. Although not sorry. You could start working, wife. I thought I was... I thought I would be a good person to, I don't know, make her happy or anything. But she's just not able to be happy, I guess. Always. Ah. Yes. So, no. You're going back here and you're going to lower the crowd's fervor. Maybe I should, should try to take over this one. Good morning, citizens. You did not hurry here, did you? A long night. Citizen Robespierre, to what do we owe the- Vendée, there was a rebellion. What? Who started it? People. Traitors. They are yelling that they have had enough of the terror of the revolution. Some say they want bread. Others, that the clergy continues to oppress the people. And there are those who shout, To hell with Robespierre's terror! You speak too freely, citizen. Enough with the lenient verdicts! Enough with indulgence! I will deal with Vendée myself, but I need the situation in Paris... 
And I need you to get rid of the undesirable, the element that undermines the sense of the revolution. Fear will help them think more rationally, to believe in its message. You must bring peace to the capital city, even if that means blood. And what about legal equality? Justice? Terror is nothing but swift justice. Oh no. Oh, well, 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 well. Well, this looks like our next problem. Oh, what's this? Archbishop Jean-Baptiste Gobel was the one who made the decision on the death of your child. He should be your next target. Okay, so it wasn't... Um, what was his name again? Pash. So it wasn't Pash, as I suspected. Whew. Our next intrigues are going to start and now Robespierre visited us and said that people should be afraid again and people don't want to support the revolution anymore because they don't want to die of hunger. Oh, how can they? Oh, bad people. This is going to be even harder. I feel bad already. I'm afraid that I will have to do a lot of ugly stuff again. But hey, we managed to go to Act 2. That was a lot happening in Act 1. I mean, we lost a child and we beheaded a lot of people. Although I said that I didn't want to behead a lot of people, but I had no choice and I became a bad person. So I doubt that Act 2 will get any better, especially with this weird guy. At first the revolution was about equality and everything, but now it's just like his will, what he wants to do and everyone has to do it. Well, that was it for today's episode. We are going to continue with today's trial in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.